Hello and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. I'm joined today with my good friend SC McPeter. Say hi. Hello. So we're here to discuss The Upstanding Sitter, which was released on the 3rd of July 1948. It's the 527th in the series and it's directed by Bob McKimson. You can find this wonderful cartoon on either the Looney Tunes Gone Collection Volume 5 DVD set, and I'll have a link below, and I believe it's also on HBO Max as well in high definition. Yeah, glorious high definition. Because if I put the yeah, full it looks cartoon, beautiful. yeah, exactly. And if and if I put the full cartoon on YouTube, it'll, the video will just get blocked. So I'll just give you a synopsis before we get into the review. So Davy works for a babysitting agency and is sent on a job to look after an egg. The egg hatches, and the little one somehow knows he is not supposed to talk to strangers. So he ends up tormenting this quote-unquote stranger. So. Just a few bits of trivia, one of which is probably going to just blow your mind a bit because I just thought this was just the most random thing I've ever found in the Looney short so far. First up, you can see in the back of I Squeal's office, you got to love those pig names by the way, that's so good, stupid but good. You can see United We Sit and that's a parody of what was used in a lot of US propaganda, you know, United We Stand, Divided We Fall, so that's where that uh, comes from. The Egg and I book that you see later on that uh, Davy reads, it appears to be a reference to the movie of the same name released by Universal Studios the year before, which is interesting because usually when they parody movies, they usually parody movies done by Warners because, well, Looney Tunes, Warner Brothers, of course, right? But here's the thing. The third thing I found, which, again, it's just so random, I couldn't believe it. There's one scene where Daffy's doing his little thing where he's talking about, um, about babysitting. But if you look at the background, you can see Marcus Aurelius, attorney at law. Now, Marcus Aurelius was the Emperor of Rome from 161 AD to 180 AD. Like, why? <laughs> what, it is, why is that? Definitely one of the strangest things that ever appears in one of these cartoons. Yeah, I mean, I guess we got to go into a time machine and ask Richard H. Thomas, who was the background painter here, why was that in there? Maybe he was researching Roman emperors at the time. I don't know. It's obviously lost the time but very bizarre in any case so with this cartoon i will point out first of all this is a childhood favorite i watched this one constantly as a kid so of course nostalgia is going to skew my uh, thinking on this particular short i think it's wonderful i think this is a very very funny short it starts off slow but it builds up nicely to all the gags that we see with daffy dark and of course this uh, chick who He's kind of like Henry Hawk, but then if it was Henry Hawk, it would make no sense whatsoever. But what, because you're not obviously tainted by nostalgia, SC, what do you think of this short? I think it's okay. It's definitely a little leak at some parts, and I definitely do think it's a bit talky at the beginning. Definitely until the action picks up. I do think it all builds up to something pretty good. Yeah, because... For me, what I lo love about this uh, short is actually the ongoing gag that leads to the to the end of the short, where the dog's house keeps on getting uh, destroyed by Daffy. And in fact, he's, he's even got one of the best uh, fade out gags. think gee well, how <laughs> how bad must this be that i have to actually fade out before going to the next scene but i i do like the cheeky gag there seems to be a bit of a a naughty gag that they that somehow kept mm -hmm. in there where the chicken replaces herself with the feather duster and then he's sort of mm -hmm. filling up the feather duster and he's seems very happy about it Loves me, loves me. You, you, know, you were mentioning to me before we recorded SC about the color scheme in this one. Now, what what is interesting about the color scheme in this one? Yeah, when I was looking at this, I noticed they liked using they had a there's a bit of a high horizon line in a lot of the shots. And I was thinking, why would that be? Then I remembered that this was during that time where they released a few shorts in Cinecolor because of the whole strike. They're having a hard time getting tech prints, so they printed a few in Cinecolor. 
but they were all des they were all created in Technicolor. The reason it only says processed Cinecolor is because of that, because they were only processed that way, but it's definitely designed to work in Cinecolor, because you'll notice that the only blue is really in the sky, and even then you don't even see much of it. There's a lot of clouds too. So yeah, it's a there's a lot of green, a lot of red. You'll notice like the red farm, the brown, stuff like that. I know that that they really tried hard to make it work like that. Either way, the the, the short would would uh, look, look really good. And I mean, are there any scenes in this short that uh, that did stand out for you that uh, you thought was funny? When I watched the old AAP print, definitely the um, ending, which I'm sure as many people know, has a very weird edit to it where they add in the Bugs Bunny line over a different end card. But def but if I'm being serious, definitely one scene that sticks out to me is just the scene of Daffy on the slingshot. Just that really fast, quick gag. It's not a gag that Bob McKimson did a lot, and it's surprising to see it in such a cartoon. Now, with, with this one, I'm just, just to slowly wrap this one up because there's really not too much to talk about it it, it becomes just your typical bot gag cartoon they're just doing all these different um gags one after another once things finally get going you know as i said nostalgia is going to cloud me on this one and i'm giving it seven and a half out of ten because what's interesting when i'm re-watching some of these shorts i've not seen in literally like many many years seeing if they actually hold up to me as an adult and this one definitely does it, it holds up pretty well. So I'm giving it, yeah, 7 out of 10. What, what would you give this one? I'm going to give it a 7. Even when I said about it being too talky at the beginning, until it starts building up, I definitely do think that the action makes up for that. And I definitely do love the ending of just how Daffy's talking to the... To calling his boss. <laughs> it's, it's just silly. It's silly. It's silly fun. I quite enjoy it. Uh, you know, but in any case, we'll, we'll wrap this one up here. I mean, let, let, let me know what you guys think about this one here, whether you've seen it before as a, as a, as a kid or, or whatever. So my favorite scene might have to be like what you said, like all this stuff about with the dog. And I hope that everyone enjoys watching the upstanding sitter sitting down. Yes, <laughs> that's right. So, with that, that'll do it for this one. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take care. That's all, folks.